So I'm going to take you through the steps that you need to follow to be able to take an app that you've created for iOS for either the iPhone or the iPad and having it available for sale on Apple's iTunes App Store. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've opened up my web browser and I've gone to developer.apple.com. Um, if you do not have an Apple developer account, you're going to have to go ahead and get one. And This is the site you want to go to. Uh, the type of account you're looking for is either an iOS apps account or a Mac apps account. Uh, they are $99 for each account. Uh, so uh, please make sure that you check um, the right one. I have an iOS apps account. Frankly, I don't create many Mac apps, so the only time that I will um, use a Mac account is one that either a client or um, the company has uh, an account for. Personally, I have my own iOS app account, so I click on iOS app account, and you'll be taken to the iOS Developer Center. Just a ton of resources here uh, to get you started, even without having an account, but I do, so I'm going to sign in, and I'm going to put in my password. And that brings me to the iOS developer account. And you'll see that uh, there are two tabs you can click on for additional information on iOS SDKs. There's the iOS 7 SDK, iOS 8 SDK. Um, as soon as iOS 8 comes out, it will actually move over and replace the iOS 7 SDK, and they'll be archived. And then as soon as iOS 9 comes out, we'll see the iOS um, beta program here. What we're interested in, however, is the iOS developer program. The iOS developer program gives you all of the certificates that you need to be able to package your app correctly for distribution through the iTunes App Store. The four different menu options underneath the iOS developer program are all the tools you need to be able to successfully deploy your app to the iTunes App Store. The first one is probably the most important. This is certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Uh, you can do most of the identification and profiling directly from Xcode. However, if you are working with PhoneGap or PhoneGap Build or one of the uh, build um, services, uh, you'll need to come in and actually uh, create some of this uh, manually. Uh, what you need to do first of all is go into identifiers. And identifiers are certificates that allow you to uniquely identify the app and tie it to an account. Uh, this is one of the ways that Apple is able to uh, eliminate as much as possible any malware or any uh, nefarious actions that happen um, on other app stores. Because every single app that is published is tied directly to a developer account and can be tracked back to that developer. So you have certificates, and these certificates are for uh, when you are getting your desktop um, up and running. You will need to have a Mac uh, desktop, and you can see that I'm all up to date on my certificates. Again, Xcode will do this for you if you have Xcode. It's the fastest, easiest way to do it. App IDs are a way for you to be able to identify your apps. And you can come in and you can uh, create as many app IDs as you like. As you can see, I've got quite a few. Um, the one that I'm actually going to be focusing on today is one that I created called Summer Fun Memory Game. I'm just going to click on that so you can see all the features that are in an app ID. Uh, you have the name. You have to have an ID. In this instance, it is code.matting.summermemorygame. It has a prefix that uh, you can create. And then you can actually see all the different types of features that can be enabled inside of your app. Next to your app IDs, you'll need to have your provisioning profiles. There are two types of provisioning profile, a development profile, which you can use for testing, and a distribution profile. Each profile is associated with an app. And so I'm going to come through and we can actually see I have one active profile, which is Summer Memory Game and we have it tied to the app ID and we um, have all the features that are available for it. I can select download and it will actually download that profile and I actually have it here in my download folder and here I have the provisioning profile. Uh, you only really need this if you are using third-party build services and they require the provisioning profile. They'll often ask for your, your iPhone developer certificate, which is a P12 certificate. 
I'm not going to worry about it too much at this point, but these are things that you need to bear in mind as you're building out the rest of your application. So you go, you build your application in whatever tool you're using. I actually created mine using PhoneGap Build. I just wanted to create something quick and easy, and I was away from my Mac at the time, so I had to do it through my PC. Um, but the good news is once I've got all of that done, I can come back to the Developer Center, and I can go to the most important part of distributing your app, which is iTunes Connect. So I click on iTunes Connect, and I iTunes Connect Dashboard. Now there are a bunch of things on the dashboard. If this is the first time that you've actually used the dashboard, I'd recommend that you put aside a whole day just to get everything straight on here. You need to get all your contracts, tax, and banking information set up correctly. Um, this will allow you to be paid for any apps that are sold, or if there's any in-app purchases, or whether you get any money from iAd advertising. You also have your reports. You have the ability to manage multiple users. So if you want some people to just be QA testers, or if you want some people to come in and manage your finances for your application, you can give them access to this site, but only for the information that they um, can see. Uh, you also have the ability to manage your apps, and we'll come back to that. You can use the iAd Ad network, which is incredibly easy to add to your apps, really like it. And then you have a bunch of reports and supporting tools. So that's all really cool, but the most exciting bit is managing your apps. So I'm going to go ahead and select Manage Your Apps. And when you select that, you come to your Manage Your Apps dashboard. Now I have quite a few apps that I've built over the years. I'm going to select See All, so you can actually see all the different apps I have. Some of them are apps that I have removed from sale, some are ready for sale, some have been rejected. Um, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to select Add New App. So I select the Add New App button at the top, and it's going to ask me to create an app name, and this is going to be called Summer Fun Memory Game. I'm going to give it a skew. And in this instance, we're going to call it Summer Fun 01. And then we need to select a bundle ID. And this goes back to that previous screen where you need to identify a bundle ID for your actual game or your, your app. And this one happens to be Summer Fun Memory Game. And you get noted that you can't change this if you start adding in iAd Network. That's OK. So I said Continue. And I'm going to be asked, you know, when do I want this to be available? I want this to be available as soon as possible. Uh, do I want to provide discounts for education? Well, I'm going to make the app free, so sure, why not? Uh, custom B2B app. Uh, B2B apps allow you to have um, an Apple ID associated for businesses. I'm actually going to say no. I'm not going to worry about that. And you can also specify specific territories and countries that you want to sell your app to. Right now, I don't really care, I just want it to be available for the world. So I hit continue. Now I'm actually into the uh, version information on my app. And this is a 1.0 version. The copyright is Mad Inc. And if you have any questions on any of these, you can hit the question mark, and that should tell you, you know, what the information is you need to put there. Put 2014. The categories. There's lots of categories. But I'm going to put mine in education. And then you can also put a secondary category. So let's see now. Um, actually, this isn't going to be education. It's going to be a game. And what's interesting is I also get two subcategories for games. So there are two subcategories for games. So I'm going to select games, and this is a puzzle game. And it's going to be uh, it's also a board game. And we're also going to select a second subcategory. And we'll put it under travel because it's a summer game. Then we come into the ratings, and please make sure you read through these ratings. Apple is very, very uh, touchy about this. Um, my app itself is very, very simple. It's just a memory game, and so I do not expect it to be any restrictions. Is there any web access inside of this app that's unrestricted? So maybe if I created a web browser? Nope, I have not. There's no gambling or contests. Um, and it's also going to ask if this app was made for kids. It, it is a made for kids app, but I'm not going to select it at this time. 
um, because you then have to fill out additional information. I'm just going to make this a general app that's available to anybody. We then get into putting in metadata, so the description of your app, and you can have up to 4,000 characters. It's exactly the same as uh, putting in the description for your app if you're developing an app that gets deployed through Google's Play Android App Store. Uh, in this instance, um, you want to be able to put in as much information about your app. So put in the name of your app right at the beginning of the description um, with something that catches the reader's attention. Uh, typically I find that when you um, are selling apps through the iTunes App Store, you want to have a really good icon, you want to have a really catchy title, and you want to have a really good opening on your description. Um, the reason why you want a good opening is that typically only the first two or three lines of your description will actually show. After that, the person that's actually looking to buy your app has to click the more button to see more information. So in this instance, I'm actually going to put uh, summer fun memory game. And then if you want to have any bullet points, put in a dash and then a point behind that. And the reason why is that there is no text formatting in the description field. And then do we have a supporting web address, a website for this? And we do. It is madink.co. And you can also put in an optional marketing and privacy URL. We're not going to in this instance. If there are any concerns regarding the app itself, Apple would like a way of being able to contact you, and this is information that does not get shown in the iTunes App Store, so you can put in your own contact information, so I'm going to go ahead and put in mine. And then if I have any additional notes statement, for instance, uh, you have an app where you have to log in with an account, you can actually put those in here so that the person testing your app can actually pull up the notes. And if it is a demo account with a user ID and password, you have to put that in here. So we come to the Uploads section, and this is where you get to associate icons with your images. And what I'll do is, on the website, I actually have uh, copies of all these images so you can use them as templates. You need to have a large icon image that's 1024 by 1024. This will be used to display your app when it gets published. You need to have a 3.5 inch retina display, a 4 inch retina display for the, the different iPhones, and then an iPad screenshot. And so I actually went ahead and created all of the screenshots um, in Fireworks. And so here we have 1024 by 768 for the iPad. For the iPhone 3, uh, we have an, um, for the iPhone with the 3.5 inch screen, we have a 640 by 960 image. For the iPhone with a 4 inch screen, we have a 640 by 1136. And then for our large icon, we have 1024 by 1024 pixels. Um, for all of these, you can export these as JPEG or PNG files, and Apple will be quite happy to accept both. I'm just going to go ahead and pull in those images. You have several images, and I'd encourage you to put as many images of these different screen resolutions up as possible. So I'm going to say save because that's all I need for my information on my app. So you'll see it says prepare for upload. To do that, you go back into view details and you select ready to upload binary. And it's going to ask you a couple of questions. Is your app designed to use cryptography or is it containing incorporated cryptography? No, my app doesn't. Does your app contain display or any access to any third party content? Nope, it does not. And does this app use an identifier for advertising? No, it doesn't. So I hit save. And now we're ready to go ahead and upload our app. Um, if you have Xcode, then you can use the application loader. If not, you can go ahead and download it without downloading Xcode. I hit continue. And now the status has changed for waiting for upload. So I already have the application loader already running. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And here we have the app. Um, I'm working on a couple of apps right now. So I'm going to select Summer Fun Memory Game. Pulls up the image. And it's going to say, OK, this is great. Now go ahead and find the IPA file. Here it is. I open that. And I hit Send. 
Now what's going to happen is that the app is going to be uploaded to iTunes Connect. 